What words of wisdom have always stuck with you? The grass is greener where you take care of it. Also the grass is greenest right above the septic tank or something along those lines. If you punish them for telling the truth, you teach them to lie. Comparison is the thief of joy. I think about it usually once per day and remind myself to judge my life against my past and only look forward. Other people think about that at least twice per day. How am I going to compete with that? You can be the ripest, yummiest, juiciest peach and there will still be people in the world who don't like peaches. Or you can be the grossest, most rotten peach ever, and there will always be a sicko who's into that. Ah, maybe my sicko is still out there. 3. Your wound is probably not your fault, but healing is your responsibility. Further to this, if you don't heal your wounds, you're going to bleed on people who didn't cut you. Afterwards, your scars aren't proof that you're broken, they're proof that you've healed. I love you all. If they gossip with you, they'll gossip about you. Let them gossip, life is too short to waste on worrying about stupid shit. Wait who said that? Udia 17 Failure is not the opposite of success, it's part of it. I've always liked the adage, the difference between a master and a novice is that the master has failed more times than the novice has even tried. Or how about, a novice tries until they get it right, a master tries until they no longer get it wrong. If you're going to eat shit, don't nibble it. As an introvert, I sometimes agree to do things with friends but then dread actually doing it when the event comes up. This saying helps me realize once I commit to something I should embrace the experience 100% without thinking of backing out. Because of this thought process, I have had some great experiences I would have otherwise bailed on. People are not against you, they are for themselves. Edit, thanks. I'm against one or two people. But I'm pro me in general. It is possible to commit no mistakes and still lose. That is not a weakness. That is life. Hashtag X200B, mother ducking Jean-Luc Picard. Just because we don't have anything important to talk about, doesn't mean the time we spend together isn't meaningful. I found this out when I came home from college to hang out with my brother. We wanted to make up for lost time and spend every minute together, but we ran out of things to talk about pretty quickly. It turns out, walking down the street and catching Pokemon is just as fulfilling as having a deep conversation. All that matters was that we were spending time with one another. I once worked with a guy for three years and never learned his name. Best friend I ever had. We still never talk sometimes. Ron Swanson My father's lesson to me about personal finance when I was in my early teens, if your outgo is more than your income then your upkeep will be your downfall my therapist regarding my confusion about my ex's behavior, stop trying to make sense of something that will never make sense from a guy in a class that never said a word, when asked why he never talked, I find that I learn very little when I'm the one talking edit to add regarding the third item, holy crap I can't believe the amount of feedback. And it's all been really interesting to read, the man that said this is retired and in his 70s, maybe 80s by now, this was several years ago. He is open and personable in one-on-one -on -one conversations and in small group conversations and always provides good input, which was why so many others found it odd that he didn't speak much. This comment was made during a large group study class at church. His point was simply that when he recognizes an opportunity to learn, he listens, intently. I have held on to that phrase because I tend to talk when I should listen, and I need to remember that balance is important. I find that I learn very little when I'm the one talking just found the best thing to say when people ask me why I'm so quiet. I find no one plans a murder out loud to be quite effective if the circumstances call for it. I feel like I'd mess this one up. You're always so quiet. Yeah. Gonna, gonna murder you, so. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it Aristotle. Becoming your own devil's advocate is the most important thing for your own intellectual development. Keep it simple stupid. Great advice, hurts my feelings every time edit, holy hell this blew up, I feel obligated to thank Dwight Schrute for this piece of comedy gold. P.S. Thanks for the Reddit gold. I promise I didn't just flip my yogurt lid over. Don't be an idiot. Changed my life. Every time I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? 
and if they would, I do not do that thing. Stay in school. Been in high school 32 years now and going strong. The difference between expectations and reality is disappointment, and sometime annoyance anger. Hashtag X200B. So when you are feeling disappointed, take a step back and ask the following questions Were my expectations too high? Am I the problem? Which is typical the root cause? Were the situations not what I expect? Was my original view assumptions wrong? Did the other party try? Did the other party even know the expectations? Did the other party have the same standards? Could I have done something so the other party could have met the expectation? aka communicate, hashtag x200b. A job worth doing is a job worth doing right. And that goes with if you're going to do something, do it right the first time, so you don't have to go back and do it again. If you don't have time to do it properly, when are you going to have time to do it twice? Hashtag x200b, words of my favorite millwright. We have a similar saying do you want it done right, or right now? Passed on from my mother, from her shrink. My mother was having trouble finishing her dissertation for her PhD, so much so that went to see a psychotherapist. After working in therapy for a while, and resolving many other issues in her life, she found she still wasn't making progress on her dis and asked her therapist about it. He just said, you don't need me for that, I don't have a diploma in my desk. You finish your dissertation the same way we all did, you put glue on your ass, you sit in front of your typewriter this was in the 80s, and you just write it. She did. Most of getting things done is not about having ideal conditions, inspiration, or even motivation, so stop waiting for all that. Just put glue on your ass and do it. If you choose not to decide, you still have made a choice. Rush. This. Friend of mine, I've asked my boyfriend 10 times if he's going to lend me the money to help pay for my rent while I'm out of work and he's never answered me me, oh yes he has answered you. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times. But that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Deserves death? I dare say he does. Many that live deserve death. And some that die deserve life. Can you give it to them? Then do not be too eager to deal out death in judgment. For even the very wise cannot see all ends. Gandalf 1, Death Penalty 0. If you are one to feel self-conscious or have mild social anxiety, it can be helpful to remember that no one is really paying as much attention to you as you think. Anxiety, everyone's judging you me, chill, no one cares depression, ever. So true, I laughed out loud and now I'm sad and need a hug. Worrying is a lot like a rocking chair, it gives you something to do, but doesn't get you anywhere. Edit, obviously, many thanks for the kind gifts strangers. If you're not learning, you're ducked. Said to me by a coworker when I confided that I felt like I still had so much to learn, and he reminded me that everyone in the company was still learning something. I can attest to this. If you feel like you've already mastered or memorized everything about your job that you could do it even when your eyes are closed, slowly you'll get bored and eventually you'll dread clocking in at work. Edit, whoa thanks for my most upvoted comment. I appreciate your replies, D. My speech coach in high school was a real Gordon Ramsay-style hard-ass. I never knew what would set him off. But after chewing my ass particularly hard one week during an atrocious practice, he said I'm not hard on you because I hate you. I'm hard on you because I know your potential. If I thought you couldn't do any better, I'd tell you to go home. Our team won state several years in a row along with occasional national championships due to his uncompromising style. I had someone very similar for a debate coach. The type that really drives you to perform, but has the personality of a lobster more often than not. Rest in peace, Mr. Paul Dove. I'm imagining him menacingly clicking his fingers together like a lobster when you make a mistake or don't try hard enough snap snap.